diversity. Say the word five times and all is forgiven. It's like magic, the progressive equivalent of the witch's spell. The irony, though, of course, is that diversity of thought is exactly what is missing in the American media at this moment. Almost every reporter in Washington is hot on this Russia story. Those who dissent are attacked by their peers as collaborators, collaborating either with Trump or more ominously with Putin himself. The result is to make everyone in the press dumber and much more credulous. Just yesterday, CNN had to fire three of its reporters after they published a bogus story attempting to connect Trump associate Anthony Scaramucci with the Russian government. Now, the piece was clearly wrong, thinly sourced, and puffy. And yet, this is the interesting part, no other American news outlets caught it. In the end, that story was exposed by something called Sputnik News. That's a media company literally owned by the Russian government, ironically. So the question is, where were the watchdogs in our own press? Well, they were, of course, hypnotized by their own preconceptions. The story confirmed their biases, therefore it had to be true, even when it wasn't. And by the way, it's not just CNN. Remember that in December, the Washington Post claimed Russian intelligence had literally hacked our power grid in this country. Now, that story was totally false in every detail. The Washington Post published it anyway. Slate.com, meanwhile, ran a piece claiming the Trump Organization had a secret server connection to Russia. That turned out to be false, too, published anyway. Even reliable old C-SPAN, probably the straightest news outlet in the world, great people there, but it still got caught up for just a second in the Red Scare itself in January. They claim to have been hacked by the Russian media. Never happened. Now, part of this is just hysteria, that moment when you convince yourself that the monsters under your bed are real. But part of it is more sinister than that. It's the conscious decision to tell your viewers what they want to hear, even when you know the core story is wrong. That's called corruption, and it's happening, and these tapes show it's happening. Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill, and he joins us tonight. This seems like a crisis point um, for that network. I mean, this is back-to-back -back two vivid, non-contested illustrations of editorial corruption. I don't think you're engaging in hyperbole here, Tucker. I mean, the bottom line is these last two stories that CNN got wrong. Remember, the first was a couple of weeks ago with James Comey, supposed to refute Donald Trump. When Donald Trump said, I'm not being investigated, James Comey told me that three times. Right. That story was wrong. I don't mind when you get it wrong, Tucker. But the problem is, as you said, thinly sourced, as in only one source. You know how many reporters were on the byline of that story? Four. That's a four to one reporter to source ratio. <laughs> And then you have this story just from a couple days ago with, with Scaramucci. Same thing. A Pulitzer winner is working on that story along with two others. Again, one source, three reporters, three to one ratio. So to go to bat with just one unnamed source, and again, we've talked about this. We don't know that source's motive. It's probably to hurt the administration. They may have a motivation to lie. To go with one source, CNN got burned once. They should have learned from it. They got burned twice. People resigned. And I don't think a crisis point is really engaged in any sort of hysteria there, Tucker. I think you're right on. It, all the mistakes are in one direction, too, you notice. We all make mistakes. I've made a ton of them. But, you know, you hope that they're honest mistakes. What bothers me about this story is that it's preventing coverage of anything else. And by the way, if you dislike Trump and were upset with the administration, there are plenty of stories you could do that would be critical of the White House. Mm -hmm. But they're sticking with a story that they know, and this tape, I think, shows, at least some of their producers know, is bogus. And they're sticking with it anyway because it makes them the most money. I mean, that's, that's wrong. You, you say that it's preventing from reporting on other stories, right? MRC, I get they're conservative, but nobody ever refutes their, their analysis, their studies. Uh, and they came up with this today, which is just stunning numbers. 353 minutes on the evening newscast since May 17th had been committed to Russia or Comey investigation. You know how many minutes have been actually dedicated to terrorism, a very important topic that a lot of That's people right. voted on? 29 minutes, 353 versus 29. How about the economy, the number one <laughs> issue that people vote on? How Donald Trump probably got into office, considering Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and he had an economic message, and Hillary Clinton did it. Five whole minutes. How about trade? Five whole minutes. So you say we're missing other stories? You're damn right we are. It seems like they're narrow casting to a small group of people who have eccentric views on Russia and they've decided this is our base and our advertising rates are going up as a result. They're getting big numbers relative to what they normally get after an election. And so this really is a business decision, it seems like to me. Yeah, let's be clear about that. CNN last quarter had its second highest watch quarter 
ever. Congratulations. Yeah. Here's the problem. All other cable news networks are up as well. And CNN, despite being up year over year the way they are, they're still in a very distant third place in terms of total viewers in prime and oh, a very yeah. distant third place. Well, not distant, but they're, they're in third place in terms of this younger demo that advertisers covet most. And look, I want to quote Chris Murphy, by the way, uh, who is a senator from Connecticut. Right? He's a Democratic senator, and he takes the bus home sometimes, Tucker, because he wants to talk to people that don't go to political rallies, just regular people that maybe uh, aren't as involved with politics, but they still care. Here's what he says, and I quote. He says, you know, normally uh, people don't call my office, don't write my office. I go on the bus, I talk to them, and I say, I'll just say they are never talking about issues like Russia. They are not talking, frankly, about what's on cable news at night. They're talking about wages, education, and public exactly. safety. So let's take a cue from a Democratic senator saying, Let's move on and let's talk about issues that people actually care about and want to be educated on. Talk it's one of those weird ruling class obsessions here in Washington. Joe, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it. All right, thank you.